Today's episode of Mythology Explained was brought to you by Skillshare. What is going on Solo fam? My name is John Solo. This sleepy pup is my new pal Gunther and we'd like to welcome you to Mythology Explained. Today we're talking about Hermes the Messenger God. If you've watched the previous few episodes of Mythology Explained then you've definitely heard me talk about Hermes before. He's played some kind of role in almost every story we've covered. He guided Hercules through the underworld during his 12th labor, saved Ares from the giants Otis and Ephialtes, and he escorted Orpheus to Hades so the musician could ask to be reunited with his wife Eurydice. Those aren't the only times we've mentioned Hermes and they certainly won't be the last because in addition to being the messenger god he was also Zeus's right hand man and possessed many a talents including lightning fast speed, the ability to travel seamlessly between the realms of the mortal and the divine, and a mind that was almost too clever for his own good. Being that Hermes will no doubt be featured in several of the myths we cover in the future I thought it'd be a good idea for us to break down the mythos behind him now so you guys will fully understand who it is we're talking about when he inevitably shows up again. However before we get into what made Hermes such a prevalent and powerful being, I'd like to take a moment to thank our homies at Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. So as you can already tell, Hermes was a god who possessed many skills, and the good news is you can follow in his footsteps and become a jack of all trades by signing up for Skillshare, the service that gives you access to over 25,000 online courses in fields like photography, music, illustration, and way, way more. For less than $10 a month, you can take an unlimited number of classes on subjects you've always wanted to learn about but never knew where you could do it. And the best part is they have legitimate experts teaching their courses so you can feel confident that you're not only getting the best information available but also using your time as effectively as possible. Whether you're just trying to spark your creativity or start up a new career, Skillshare is perfect for you. They've helped me and over 7 million others hone our skills and can help you do the same. If you have any interest in becoming a better you, just follow my link in the description for a two-month free trial. And now Solo fam, it's time for us to get started. Make sure to hit that like button if you don't want to break Gunther's heart. As you can tell, he is restless because he's worried that you're not going to hit that like button. Subscribe to have more mythological content delivered to your sub box on a regular basis. And most importantly, enjoy. So we've already established that Hermes, known by the Romans as Mercury, is the messenger god, and ipso facto, the god of messengers. But you might be surprised to hear that he presided over more than that a lot more. Due to his previously mentioned lightning fast speed and the fact that he was constantly moving from place to place, he was thought to be the god of commerce, profit, agreements and contracts, thieves and trickery, travel, roads and borders, hospitality, friendship, sex, sports, athletes, and the fertility of land and cattle, to name just a few. In addition to all of that, he was also the protector of roads and travelers, guided the souls of the dead down to Hades, and directed the dreams sent by Zeus to mortals. The god played a role in just about every facet of life you can think of, and as a result, he was worshipped throughout all of Greece, and his temples and statues were extremely common. In a way, you can think of his statues and other idols as good luck charms. Because he presided over so many different parts of life, the continual worship of him was thought to bring good fortune in one way or another. Travelers would pray to him for safety on their journeys, merchants for success in business, farmers for the well-being of their crops and livestock, the list goes on and on. One of the weirder things about Hermes is that because he was the patron of roads and borders, statues of him were placed at the midway point between villages. The reason this is weird is because those statues, called Herma, took the form of pillars with Hermes' head on top and, uh, big floppy dong at the bottom. And sometimes they don't even have Hermes' head, so it was just a dong. To those curious about why the pillars had dongs on them, I don't have an answer for you. It's not like they pointed in the direction of the next town over, they were just dongs of stone, which would actually make a good band name. Like many of the gods, the ancient Greeks also threw festivals in Hermes' honor. Similar to the Olympics, the festival, called Hermea, honored Heracles and Hermes as patrons of sports and gymnastics. The festivals were usually exclusive to young adults, with the competitions being even more exclusive to teenage boys. In a way, these events were a rite of passage for those boys as they entered adulthood, and one would often see statues and paintings of Hermes himself as a teenager in the gyms where those young men trained. But now that you've got the rundown on what Hermes presided over and how the Greeks incorporated him into their daily lives, it's time we talk about his character and my favorite myths and fables involving him. Buckle up, because you're in for a treat. 
So if you're like me, your first impression of Hermes came from Disney's Hercules, where he's shown to be a skinny little dude who flutters around, talks like he's at a disco in the 70s, and is so weak that he's actually restrained by two of Hades' most incompetent henchmen. Well, I'm here to say that Disney did Hermes dirty, because starting from the day he was born, he proved himself to be one of the strongest and smartest of all the Olympians. Now, it probably won't be a surprise to you that Hermes' father was none other than Zeus, who was apparently just incapable of keeping it in his pants. Hermes' mother was the Pleiad Maya, and Pleiads, for those curious, were a kind of nymph. Now, Maya gave birth to Hermes in a cave in Mount Selene, and she was actually pregnant for less than a day before having him, which is only appropriate for a god known for his speed. Then, later that same day, after his mom had gone to sleep, Hermes snuck out of his cradle and started exploring the world. Interestingly, the first thing he did after leaving his home was kill a tortoise and make a liar out of its shell and some sheep guts. Then, the little god was hungry, so naturally he chose to steal 50 cattle from his brother Apollo. He traveled to Mount Pyria, where they were being kept, and led them across the sandy beach so no one could track their footprints. But just as a precaution, he made them walk backwards so anyone who saw their prints would think they were headed towards the mountain instead of away from it. There ended up being a witness, though, an old man tilling his vineyard, but Hermes told him to forget what he saw that day or he'd do some serious damage to his farm. And as we all learn at one point or another, when a baby who's leading 50 cattle behind him gives you an order, you follow it. So Hermes leads the cattle to the river Alpheos where there was a cow shed. He corralled most of them into the shed, but killed two and sacrificed their meat so he could eat it later, because gods aren't allowed to eat mortal food. Then he snuck back into his crib as if nothing had happened, but as we all know, it's basically impossible to do anything when you're that young without your mom finding out about it. Because whether they want to admit it or not, moms are all-knowing and have superpowers. Maya stormed over to Hermes' crib, scolded him for the shenanigans he pulled, and told him, Apollo is going to punish you and there is nothing I can do about it. Sure enough, Apollo was able to track down the cattle thief and he was pissed. But of course, when he confronted the newborn, saying, tell me where you hid my cattle or I'll cast you into the underworld, Hermes played dumb. He said to the sun god, I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm a baby. Like, a day-old baby. How and why would I ever steal your cows? Also, what even are cows? Unfortunately for Hermes, Apollo wasn't buying it, so he dragged his little brother to Zeus for help resolving the situation. Once again, Hermes tried playing dumb and swore up and down that he had nothing to do with the cattle theft, but Zeus wasn't buying it either. The king of the gods literally laughed out loud, told Hermes to cut the sh and show Apollo where his cattle were hidden. The newborn did just that, but he could tell Apollo was still really pissed, and he did not want to be on the receiving end of his wrath because as powerful as Hermes was, Apollo was fully grown and far stronger. Stronger. To appease him, Hermes began to play his lyre, and the marvelous music hit Apollo right in his soul, melting away his anger and filling him with joy. Then, as a friendship offering, Hermes gave Apollo the instrument that made the music he loved so much, and in return, Apollo gave him a whip, making him the keeper of herds. The beautiful thing about that is Apollo would go on to teach his son Orpheus how to play the lyre, and Orpheus would go on to become the most talented musician in all of Greece, but we've talked about that story. Anyway, Hermes swore to never steal from Apollo again, and Apollo swore to be Hermes' best friend and love him more than all of the other gods. Then, to show the significance of his oath, Apollo also gave Hermes the caduceus, the golden staff with two snakes wrapped around it that we typically see Hermes portrayed with. After these shenanigans were finally said and done, Zeus sought to utilize the potential that Hermes had displayed during his heist and appointed him with the numerous titles and responsibilities that we mentioned earlier, essentially making him his right-hand man. Speaking of, there's some myths I want to discuss involving Zeus and Hermes that I think you're really gonna like. You might recall me saying earlier that Hermes was the god of hospitality. Well, in this first myth, Zeus and Hermes go to a village in the Lydian Empire disguised as peasants to test whether or not its residents would provide hospitality to those in need. And much to their frustration, the two get turned down literally a thousand times before being graciously accepted by an elderly couple, Baucis and Philemon, who actually lived in the smallest and most dilapidated house in the village. After being treated to the best the couple could offer them, Zeus and Hermes revealed their true identity as gods and told the old couple that this town was wicked and would therefore be punished. The gods ordered the couple to climb the steps of Mount Olympus, so they did, and when they looked back over their village, the entire area had been flooded except for their house, which had been transformed into an ornate temple dedicated to Zeus. Per the couple's wish, Zeus allowed them to be the guardians of that temple, and he also promised that when it was time for one of them to die, the other would as well. When that time finally came, they were turned into a pair of intertwining trees that stood tall and alone in the isolated, boggy terrain. I assume they rather would have been put in a beautiful meadow or on a scenic hillside, but 
I guess a swamp is nice too. Another myth that Hermes is well known for is when he slayed the hundred-eyed giant, Argus. You see, one day, Zeus was having yet another affair with the princess Io when his wife Hera suddenly appeared on the scene. Almost reflexively, Zeus turned his lover into a cow so he wouldn't be caught, but Hera wasn't so easily fooled and demanded he give her the cow as a gift. With no other choice, he handed her over and Hera gave the cow to the giant Argus. You know, for safekeeping. Now, Zeus couldn't rescue Io himself and blow his cover, so he sent Hermes in his place. The messenger god played some beautiful music to lull the giant to sleep, then cut off his head and rescued the princess. A fun bonus detail is that to reward Argus for his service, Hera placed his hundred eyes on the tail of her sacred bird, the peacock. And now for our final story, I want to share one of Aesop's fables about Hermes because it's pretty hilarious. After Zeus made the human race, he told Hermes to give them intelligence. So Hermes divided the total intelligence into equal portions and applied them to each person. You would think that'd be the right way to do it, but as it turns out, Nah, because while each portion was equal in size, it wasn't proportional to each person. As a result, short people became the most wise because their bodies were mostly filled with intelligence, while the tall people were stupid because the potion he poured into their bodies didn't even reach their knees. As someone who's 5'10", or in other words, not actually tall, but just tall enough to not be considered short, I wonder where I would fall on Aesop's intelligence spectrum. Probably near the bottom regardless of height. Now there are a lot more myths involving Hermes that we could get into, but I actually don't want this video to be 22 hours long. Not to mention that because many of these stories involve events, gods, and other figures that we've yet to talk about, like Odysseus, Hermes' son Pan, who he might have actually evolved from theologically, and Pandora, they'll definitely come up in future episodes. So instead, I'd like to bring this episode to a close and ask for your thoughts on what you heard today. Were you already familiar with Hermes' backstory or was it all new? And if the latter's the case, what do you think of the actual God compared to his portrayal in pop culture? Let me know in the comments down below. And when you're through with that, make sure you sacrifice to that like button just like the Greeks did to Hermes, subscribe to have new mythological content delivered to your sub box on a regular basis, and share this video with your fellow mythology nerds. As always, the links to my social media are down below. Give those a follow if you want to stay updated on what content is coming up next, offer a suggestion, or just say hello. And give Gunther a follow too. I think he would really appreciate it. I can just tell. Thank you all for watching Solo Fam. I'll be seeing you very soon. Until next time, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first. Thank you.